Fox News alert. Fresh violence rocking the Middle East. Israel launching waves of airstrikes against Gaza after the Iranian-backed terror group Hamas fires rockets into southern Israel. It all comes as President Biden tells Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that he supports a ceasefire. And progressive Democrats push for the U.S. to stop a $735 million weapons sale to Israel. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is a Fox News contributor. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you about this. Um, listen to Ro Khanna. He's a congressman, of course, from California. This is what he says from his perspective. This is not the time for platitudes. Children are dying, and Netanyahu, who is desperate to cling to power, is out there saying that he is doing this with the United States' support. The president needs to make it very clear. No, you are not. President Biden did not go that far, but yesterday for the first time around 5.30 p.m., uh, we found out that he told Netanyahu he does support a ceasefire. Get your thoughts on that. Well, Dana, we all like to see the loss of life end, but there's no moral equivalence there. That's the, that's the mistake that Congressman Kahana makes. He, you talked about Hamas as being an Iranian-backed terror group. It's an ideological group. Its entire strategy depends on killing civilians in Israel, so the Israelis will have to respond, and then the world will uh, crush the Israelis. That's, that's their mission statement. They want to wipe Israel from the face of the earth. The Israelis are simply trying to defend themselves. Prime Minister Netanyahu is trying to defend Arabs and Jews and Christians and Muslims alike. And he's trying to make sure he doesn't kill civilians. Israel has every right to do all that it needs, not only to defend itself against the current rocket attacks, but to make sure that the kind of attack can never happen again. They need to complete that mission. It's absolutely essential for the security of Israel that they do so. Well, the policies you help push uh, while serving with President Trump are in uh, the line of fire, so to speak. New York Times, here's what they write. Violent shakes Trump's boast of a new Middle East. They go on to say the accords that uh, Trump helped negotiate, the Abraham Accords, were widely seen as demonstrating declining interest on the part of some of Israel's Arab neighbors in backing the Palestinians, giving Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel more latitude to pursue strategies that further intensified Israeli Palestinian tensions, which essentially are saying is you, you open the door for Netanyahu to do what he wants. Your response? That's crazy leftist talk that has always been pro-Palestinian. What, what we did was create the situation where Israel had the right to defend itself. The United States made clear that this, the, what six presidents in a row did, declare Iran a state sponsor of terror, would be responded to in a serious way. So we withdrew from the JCPOA. And then we delivered the Abraham Accords, where peace-loving people throughout the Middle East understood that foreign policy couldn't depend, their foreign policy couldn't depend on having Israel as their primary adversary. Indeed, their ec economies, their military depended on a good relationship with Israel. What, what changed, Bill, is that this country, under President Biden, is now sitting at the table with the Iranians. We're in Vienna mm -hmm. talking about how many billions of dollars, two, five, seven, ten, we're going to give to the Iranians. That money is the same money that gets funneled to groups like Hamas, groups like Hezbollah, who is watching this very closely, groups like the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. We're going to give money to the very Iranian regime that is backing an, a terrorist that is launching missiles into Israel today. This is crazy stuff. Yeah, we're going to have to keep an eye on that because they are you're exactly right. They're in, at the table in Vienna while all of this is going on. Uh, can I take you back a little bit in time, just about a year ago, um, when there were some headlines that were making the rounds? Of course, you were a part of these headlines um, in regards to where COVID started. And the idea that it might have started in a lab was um, mentioned and quite ridiculed by uh, the press, saying that you uh, provided no evidence of that. And today... That story, that question is very much once again at the forefront with the real possibility of that lab being the point of origin. Dangest thing, Dana. I remember. I remember coming home and I got notes from friends saying, are you sure? Because the left, the left wanted to deny that it was possible that this is what had actually happened. They were adopting what was essentially Chinese Communist Party propaganda, right? The Chinese came out very hard. They wanted to make clear that this didn't come from their laboratory. Indeed, you'll remember too, Dana, they at one point pointed to the United States as the source of this virus. They were doing everything they could to cover up and to deflect. Look, the Chinese Communist Party was actively engaged in viral research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. While I can't prove it, every piece of evidence, and you've seen scientists today come out saying we need more investigation, 
Every piece of evidence points to a leak from this laboratory. That's the, it's all circumstantial to be sure. The people who could clean this up, the people who could answer these questions have refused to do so. The Chinese Communist Party knows where this came from. They know who patient zero was. They could fix this. If I'm wrong, they could embarrass Mike Pompeo. Come on, bring it. Mm -hmm. uh, to show the world that this didn't come from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. They're not going to do that, Dana, because they know that they covered this up in the same way that Chernobyl was covered up for so long. And we saw the same results. Millions of people dead. Well, remarkable stuff. Sir, nice to have you back on our program Thank today. You. Mike Pompeo will speak again Thank soon. you, Bill. Thank, Thank you, Dana. You.